The New Testament Church welcomes you to join us as Pastor Majid Saloon leads us in seeking a closer relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, changing us from glory to glory. Welcome back from Egypt and Australia. How you doing, guys? God's good? We can either follow his promise or we can follow our circumstances or our fears, but we're going to follow somebody somewhere. So it gets back to us. The choice is always ours, and sometimes you've got to dig through to make that right choice. Amen. It's awesome to be here this morning. It's uh, just wonderful. God's moving around the world, and um, he's got something to say on every continent to every people. He doesn't have favorites. He has everybody. He does. He wants to touch every, every person, every nation, and there are hundreds of thousands being saved in the Middle East. In all the mayhem, there's the glory of God to salvation to so many people. So we can look at the mayhem and go down or we can look for God in the midst of it and know that darkness can only shine till the light gets there. And so our job is to take the light into all the world, outside of our lounge room, outside of our circumstances, outside of our families, outside, like we said Friday night, into the field, somehow, some way. But God is, wants to touch the world and he's chosen to do it through you and me. He's chosen that we would be co-workers, not slaves, co-workers with him in the field. God sent somebody. He said, well, how about you? God help that person. Yep, off you go. <laughs> God, go buy some groceries for that person. There you go. Sometimes God shows you a need because you're the one who's going to fill it. <laughs> well, it's the church's job. Yep, guess who the church is? It's us. So God's good. That's all I know. Sometimes it doesn't feel like it, but that doesn't stop it being true. I want to uh, take us to two levels uh, to today. Um, I'm going to just highlight the first one. Um, every like point is like a, a teaching in itself, but you'll know where we're going. I want to take us to everything that can come into our life when fear is removed. I want to take us through two people who were in this fight. One took it all and one took a little while to get there. And the first story, the first scripture I want to bring to you is out of Song of Solomon. In uh, Song of Solomon chapter 2, sorry, uh, yeah, chapter 2 verse 4, he brought me to the banqueting house and his banner over me is love. You know, I've been singing that song in church for nearly 30 years. We get all sorts of warm and fuzzy feelings, especially us girls about that song. <laughs> I mean, this would make an awesome chick flick. <laughs> but I never saw the depth of this song, ever. I never saw the depth of this writing until I got asked to speak at a DNA conference and I started to dig a little bit. And I, I, I learned this, that when the Shumanite woman met Solomon, this is the historical account, I'm going to read just one passage of an historical account of how they met and everyone that I went to, because I'm like, how did they meet? Because I always thought it was Abishag, but it's not. Well, it doesn't look like it. Every historical account that, that I went to said things like this. 
In the book of Ecclesiastes, Solomon tells us that he undertook expeditions to discover what life was like on various levels. Once he disguised himself as a simple country shepherd lad, and in that state he met this young lady, whoever she was. That's not really the point. They fell in love, and after they had promised themselves to each other, he went away and was gone for some time. The Shulamite girl cries out for him and her loneliness. Then comes the announcement that the king in all his glory is coming to visit the valley. While the girl is interested in this, she's not really concerned because her heart longs for her lover. But suddenly she receives word that the king wants to see her. She doesn't know why until she goes to see him and discovers that he is her shepherd lad. She fell in love with the king before she knew who he was or what he had. And here when we go back to Song of Solomon, <laughs> I, just, I went right back. We go back to Song of Solomon. I want to break this down. He brought me into the banqueting house and his banner over me is love. First of all, he bought me. He brings us somewhere to do something and put something in our hand. God never has us sit in a corporate gathering like this. God never brings us somewhere unless he wants to do something for our good and for his glory, ever. God bought you and I into this place today. It's a divine appointment for you to be sitting here today and God brought you here with an agenda to do something to bless your life, to do something, to put something in your hand. God has an agenda and it's you. Like we heard before, God is here because you're here. Not because people are here or not because there's a preacher here, but because you're here, you're hungry, you're thirsty, and that is all God requires to show up and do something. Sometimes we're present but not present, as we said the other night. We need to be present in our thinking, present to receive. Not worrying about home, not worrying about stuff. That's all going to be there when you leave. But when God wants to change your world, he's going to start with you and me on the inside. Always. How can I get new things unless God starts to put new pictures and new stuff on the inside of me? How can I go somewhere new, touch something different if my thinking still stays the same and causes me to be like a robotic, robotic person to say, well, okay, you know what, that, that sounds good, but I'm just going to let habitual living take charge. God brought us here, and when he, he brought me into the banqueting house, let me tell you, the banqueting house is called the house of wine, the house of new wine. It's a house where they stored all the beautiful vats where the wine was processing. Like now we put the wine in uh, underground cellars and things. This was a house of wine. This was a house that had amazing beauty in it, kingdom things, treasures of the kingdom. It was a house that reflected Solomon's kingship. And she said, he brought me into his banqueting house. And she said, you know what? I could have been intimidated. <laughs> I could have looked at all this stuff and said, oh my gosh, I didn't deserve this. I could have looked at all this stuff and thought, how am I ever going to put my hands on this stuff? You know what? When she walked into the banqueting house, her eyes weren't on the stuff, it was on the king. When she came into the banqueting house, when she came into this house, it is such a picture of when you and I meet Jesus and he says, you're going to come and live in my house, my kingdom. And my kingdom reflects the glory of my kingship. And when she came in, she had no dowry. 
She had nothing to give. She didn't perform. All she had was love. This crazy love. And you know what? When Solomon looked at her, he knew that all she had was herself and her heart. And that's all he wanted. It was enough. Wouldn't it be amazing if we could all get the revelation right here, right now, that we are enough? Not God, I'll be enough when I do better. I'll be enough when I get stronger. I'll be enough when I perform better. I'll be enough when I sing better, do better, be better, act better. No, he says, right here, right now. You are enough. All he wants is you. And unfortunately, when we get saved, we start to hear about all the stuff now I can have. (laughs) Well, you can have promises, you can have blessing, you can have, you know what I mean, everything God can give. And sometimes we strive to receive this. Sometimes we strive to receive what we've already been given. We strive to become who we already are. We forget the middle part of, it's a whole other teaching, but we forget that in the middle from salvation, there's a covenant of love that God wants us to give a revelation for. Because you know what? I believe we don't have a faith problem. We have a love problem because when you know how much you're loved, it's easy to go to him boldly, courageously, because you know that you know that you know that he loves you right here, right now, what's and all. You know, there are Christians everywhere trying to get back in a house they never left because they had a bad day. You see, when you come into this house, there's change, there's strength, there's blessing. There's the opportunity to get up one more time when you fall down. God's not afraid of bad choices, bad days. He says, come on, let's get up and run again. God's not afraid when somebody walks all over me and hurts me. He says, come on, Adrian, don't let somebody else dictate your battleground. Get up and forgive and move on. In this house... There's kingdom treasures. Everything that King Jesus came to give you and I is in the house. It's in the house today. It's going to be in the house when you go home because it's your house. You are living in the house of glory. You are inhabiting and dwelling in the presence of an almighty king where everything is at your disposal. And the only thing that's going to stop you receiving it is fear and intimidation. A little too old to preach like this. <laughs> Joanne and Mark have to raise me from the dead going home, I think. <clears throat> come on, what, what are you doing here today? I don't know about you, but I didn't come to preach. I come to get something from Jesus. I'm selfish. And you know what? He's got enough to give something to me and everybody here. Strength for your life. Refreshing for your weary journey. You see, you know why she wasn't intimidated? Because she says, the banner over me is love. You know, what is the banner in a battle? Is it not the rallying point in a battle? Like they blow the trumpet. Oh, where are we going to gather? Oh, there's the banner. We rally to the banner. Jehovah Nissi, the Lord our banner. And we see an amazing picture of a covering, of a banner, of a blanket of perfect love. Casting out every bit of fear and intimidation as she walks in to the king. And then everything that is his becomes hers and everything that is hers becomes his. She got the better end of the deal. And the thing that didn't, the thing that helped her receive everything was this 
incredible thick covering of unconditional love. Wouldn't it be amazing, I say it again, if you and I just knew that right here, right now, that I'm enough and God wants to do something in me right here, right now. You know, sometimes we pull back and we say, well, God wouldn't miss me if I don't pray. Well, how many parents, you have more than one child, you have four or five children, and if the other four children are talking, talk, 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 but one of them is silent and gone away because they feel bad, are you going to miss that child? Of course you are. When your voice is not heard, he misses you and he looks for you and he longs to come and say, I want to love them, I want to help them, I want to bless them, I want to blanket them with such love so they can receive everything that's in this house of new wine, that's in this kingdom. He bought her from nothing into everything. Come on, if you and I thought we had something ever to offer God, we need to shake that off about right now. (laughs) She came from no future to future, hopelessness to hope, weakness to strength. And in the house is where your journey is. You know, you don't have a bad day and then have to get back in the house. You're in the house. Receive what he did on the cross, his mercy, his blood, his love, his forgiveness, his restoration. You can never get good enough to come in the house. It's by invitation. And he called you. He called you were out while you were out in the field doing life and he called you to his kingdom, to his house. You had nothing to give then. And what have I got now except to fall in love more and more and more and more. I said the other night, my favorite scripture is still that I may know him. I want to tell you what I know him who knows me. When I love him and see the love that he has for me, I can come into his presence and say, God, I thank you. I love you. Like I love what Hagar says. I now see the God who sees me. Then I want to go to another lady, (laughs) another lady. (laughs) I said the other day, you know, us ladies can, we argue with God, we can, we can do that. (laughs) John chapter four. Uh, Verse three, Jesus, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee, but he needed to go through Samaria. So he came to the city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there, therefore being wearied from his journey, Jesus sat by the well at the sixth hour. The woman of Samaria came to draw water, and Jesus said, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria asked, um, said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with the Samaritan. And Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God, who who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he'd give you living water. Then we go on, and this this is something that amazes me. Go on, in verse 16, Jesus said to her, Go call your husband. The woman said, the woman answered and said, I have no husband. And Jesus said, you have, you have well said, I have no husband. For you've had five husbands, and the one whom you now have is not your husband. That you truly spoke. You see, what I love about this story is we see love in action. We see Jesus wanting to bring everything in the house of wine to a Samaritan woman. We see Jesus wanting to take a Samaritan woman to the place of his banner over me is love and she is going to receive kingdom love, kingdom blessing, everything of the kingdom. In the history of this story, 
when the Jews did the same journey as Jesus did, they would cross the River Jordan twice to avoid the Samaritans. They were the yicky people. <laughs> we don't touch that. So they came, the Jews would go to great lengths to avoid the Samaritans and contact with the Samaritans. It started off when Nehemiah was rebuilding the wall. They were a mixed race. They just didn't have a whole lot of stuff going for them. Excuse me. And here is Jesus went out of his way to go to Samaria. Isn't that awesome? Now the all of the, the the old church over here that was oh gosh we just we're just so right and so good they're avoiding everything and over here is Jesus went out of his way to go to a place that everybody else avoided and sometimes that's the ugly places in you and me. <laughs> Sometimes that's the weak places in you and me. But here's Jesus trying to tell this woman who he is. He's trying to get involved with her. He's trying to say, I want to bless you. I want to bless your life. And he's using a natural example of water and thirst to show her something spiritual, a spiritual truth. He's trying to say to her, I want to put you in a river that's never going to run dry. I want to put you in a life that's going to be filled with blessing. I want to take your life and everybody around you. And she says to him, her response to him, what are you doing talking to me? I mean, you don't even like me. <laughs> Did you not know I'm a Samaritan? Is your GPS not working this morning? What are you doing? And culture and wrong teaching and her life, her circumstances were trying to push away the greatest revelation of all eternity. All this stuff that she was saying to Jesus, I'm a woman, don't you even know that you shouldn't be talking to me? He says, I am. Don't you know that you got lost, that you shouldn't even be? Us Samaritans, we're the yicky people. We're a little less than perfect. We were born on the wrong side of the tracks. <laughs> you know what? I, I love this picture. Jesus leaned across the well. <laughs> And he looked at her and he said, lady, I know you're a woman. I know you're a Samaritan. And I also know what you're not telling me. That you've had some relationship issues. But lady, I'm still here. And I'm not going anywhere till you let me bless you. I'm not going anywhere. You can try to disqualify me all you like, but I qualified you to receive everything in the kingdom. He said, I'm still here. And I'm not going anywhere. You know, she was so excited. So excited. She ran off. She didn't even care what he, what he saw that she hadn't said. She just said, oh, my gosh, you've got to come meet this man. He told me all this stuff about me. And the stuff may not have been good, but it was awesome meeting. You know, you can try to disqualify yourself from blessing with all your stuff. But always know he's got a longer list than you're going to give him. 
you'll say, well, I've done this and I've done that. He says, and you've also done this, 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 this. But I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm not going anywhere. It's amazing when we have a bad day, when we try to disqualify ourselves. We're wired so negatively sometimes. You know, you can have a great day and do one bad thing. What do you remember when you go to bed at night? Jesus reaches out to everybody. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Who made that covenant promise? Who made it, you or him? He did. So did he say it was conditional? Did he just promise to be there on your journey and never leave you or forsake you? Let me finish with just this thought. You cannot ditch Jesus. You might think he's ditched you and you're going, Jesus, where are you? Jesus, where are you? He's like, yo, I'm right here. I'm trying to find you, Jesus. Hello? I haven't vacated the premises. I'm still here. And I promised you I started with the journey and I will finish the journey with you. Amen? You cannot ditch Jesus. So for everybody here and everybody that's watching this on television, I want to tell you when Jesus promised to never leave you nor forsake you, he meant what he said and said what he meant and you can't ditch him. You need to call out and trust him that he can make something beautiful out of whatever it is you're going through. Amen? Amen. God bless you. That's just, I just love God. Amen. You can't hide. You can run, but you can't hide from the lover of your soul. Right here, right now, today, He wants to heal your heart, heal your body. Put some stuff behind and bring fresh dreams. He wants the very best for you, regardless of when you stop believing the best for you. Get this picture that he leans across the well and he said, Lady, I am not. Thank you for watching this edition of Glory to Glory. We would appreciate your prayerful support of our ministry. You're welcome to join us at the New Testament Church, 6772 Lamphere Road in Rome, Fridays at 7.30 and Sunday mornings at 9 and 10.30. From the New Testament Church and Pastor Majid Saloon, may the power and blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you.